All right, guys, just come up to uh, 5 p.m. and we're just hanging out in the garage waiting for uh, Alin to show up. He's uh, graciously offered some time tonight uh, after work, so I did manage to find some assembly lube. Uh, I actually had the um, engine assembly grease, but I bought some assembly lube, some Lucas brand assembly lube. So we have uh, choice. Choice is always good. So, engine is on the stand, as you saw, and... Uh, We'll figure out what we want to do first. I think we're going to take some measurements and go from there. So I told him he has to measure before he has his second beer, just in case. So, mm -hmm. unless the measuring gets better when you get uh, another beer in you. Well, you know, my measuring is not better because I'm missing a, oh, a washer. You're going to be missing more than a washer. I'm missing a washer, which you... The last time we was here measuring stuff, <laughs> we lost a little spacer over here somewhere. Maybe it's still on the ground. Yeah. That was a, like two years ago. It was more than two years ago. Anyway, so we're going to do some measurements first just to confirm the uh, machine shop. Um, that, you know, obviously they had the pistons when uh, they did the machining, but it's probably better just to double check. Yeah, you wrote. Good job you wrote that on there. <laughs> jeez. Happened before, oh, obviously. Oh, jeez. Well, he didn't <laughs> take his own, uh, his own words, so. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so we're just going to measure first of all, and then uh, we'll come back. Okay, so we just spent the last uh, few minutes measuring the boards in the engine block. And uh, number one is slightly different from numbers two through six, but uh, so this is uh, 30 over. So we're at 0 .031 for number one and 0 .305 for numbers two through six. So we're okay with that. Absolutely perfect. So now... Now we're going to check the uh, crank. I'm not telling him what it's cut to, so we'll see if his measurements uh, pan out. All right, so we've uh, measured the crank, and uh, we've got all our numbers here, and uh, everything checks out as far as the rods and the mains. We're 10 under on both, so uh, we're good to go there. We've just blown the galleries out uh, in the crank and in the block, so I think we're ready to start installing the crank. So, uh, we got the bearings over there, the bearing shells are in Lynn's hand, so I'm going to start uh, doing the lower bearing shells and then we'll uh, come back. Okay, so the bottom bear, uh, bearing shells are in for the uh, crankshaft. We've got all the uh, bearing cap uh, bearings in, uh, one through four. We've got our assembly lube ready over here, so we're using this uh, Lucas brand assembly lube. So we're just going to lube up the, uh, the bottom bearing shells and we're going to drop the, or just lay the crank in there. Hopefully the engine stand holds it. Of course it will. Yes, it will. I'm just kidding. Sideways. It yeah. Do I need more than two bolts in there? <laughs> One's enough. <laughs> okay, All right. so we've just got the main bearing cap, so not, uh, no bolts or anything like that. We're just putting in the thrust washers. We're going to start with uh, standard size thrust washers. We've got an assortment of them here. So we're going to uh, put the standards in, measure the uh, end float, which should be between, off, off the top of my head, 0.006 to 0.008. Yeah. So uh, we'll just check that to make sure we're good. We may have to swap them out, but uh, that's what we're up to. He doesn't like it because the crank's fighting him. <laughs> I'm going to have to lever it back for him to get those in. Okay, we've got the main bearing caps torqued down. Uh, we've got the dial indicator on the, uh, on the snout here, and uh, we're just about to check the end float. So we're going to lever it uh, forwards and backwards to check our end float and see if we need to change the thrust washer that we've installed. We've, like I said, we've got two standards in there right now. So we're looking for between 0 0.006 and 0 0.008 as our end float. So, uh, what's it doing? Looking for a magnetic north? <laughs> Alright, we'll figure the gauge out. I've got one as well if need be. And we'll come back. Alright, just looking at the uh, piston ring end gaps. And the manual is calling for 0 0.012 to 0 0.017. So here we are, cylinder 1 top middle um, 018 you can see basically followed along so we're pretty close to being this one's a little bit large but uh, pretty close as far as the end gaps are concerned so we should be good there so on to the next so step. just a quick note on the uh, piston ring end gap we're just looking at the county uh, this was in the box with the pistons and they're calling for uh, clearance of 0 0.0018 to 0 0.0022 so we're good as far yeah, as the uh, as far as the county uh, numbers are concerned. All right, we're uh, changing out uh, connecting rods 
and pistons, taking out the uh, gudgeon pin. We're just trying to figure out the snap ring pliers. I switched them, but I shouldn't have. <laughs> Alright, I'll be back. Alright, just putting the rings on the uh, pistons. This is number one. So we've just put the uh, connecting rod, rod in. So uh, first is the oil control ring, basically. So Goes. it's three parts. Yeah. So the bottom ring on, then the oil control. Yeah. This doesn't matter. Now on the TR4, there are, it's possible that they overlap sometimes like this. Isn't there colors on the TR4 ones? I've seen yeah. ones where the colors... They have a green and a red yeah. color, so you make sure that when you install it, you can yeah. see both colors. If yeah. you don't see one of the colors, this means you overlap. Yeah. But here, you can't overlap them, so you're fine. And we made sure that we have the right orientation of the piston with the arrow yeah. pointing forward. So that's basically the arrow here, pointing towards the forward, the front of the engine, and the connecting rod with the open piece towards towards the oil, the, oil. the towards the busy side of yeah. the engine where the pump and everything yeah. is. So. So second. Uh, now we're gonna the other rail. Oh, this is probably not gonna. <laughs> If we want to use that, we can't have any music on. <laughs> That's your fault. You have to get used to that. Yeah. That's why I brought Alexa yeah. to the shop so I can yeah. pause it quickly when I want. And that's it. Okay. Now, for this, we would like to stagger them a little bit. Well, the... we can stagger it when we put it in the. Uh, when yeah. we pop it in, right? But we'll make sure they're staggered. Even now, we can just. Preset it the opposite directions, and that's so you staggered the two, yeah, bottom rings, yeah. And then that's piston number one. So we start with this. This is the second. Yep. So we do third, second, first. Okay. In this order, we have the dot here. The dot always dot always goes up. Up. Yep. So we don't use the two. I always like put it directly into the groove. Yep. And then you just slide the other one down. In. And then the number one. one. Yep. And the dot is up. And that's it. And now we lubricate the the tiddlet out of it. Yep. And so we're just going to use uh, motor oil for this. Motor and are okay. uh, you want to use assembly lube? Oh, whatever you want. I use assembly lube because it stays longer. But since we're going to start the engine soon, yeah, we hope. Yeah, it's fine. Well, maybe within the next two weeks. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get the bearings out. We'll put those in, and. Uh, We'll get to installing the first piston in the block. Okay, so we've got the crank all the way at the bottom. Yeah. We've got the bearing installed, one shell installed, and lubed. We have the piston well lubed with uh, oil and the rings all lubed with oil, and the cylinder wall lubed with oil. Yeah. We're just holding the piston up above the deck. We're going to put the spring compressor on and compress the rings. Staggered the... Uh, stagger, yeah, we make sure we staggered the rings. One is front, one is back. Yep. Tighten it. I don't know where that rubber mallet is. It's over there. Okay. So I'll move the screwdriver. Got it. It's enough. Square up the Move that, square that up. Yeah, stop it. Flush. And then. We're in. Okay. First piston in, arrow to the front. So we'll flip it and we'll put the uh, bearing cap on. Look. Be right back. If it's the height now you correct uh, you you adjust with the crank not with the piston mm -hmm. you can adjust yep. the crank yep. back and forth until it comes where it belongs yep 
There it is. That's it. Yep. And now we have the other one. They're, ne they're never gonna spin, don't worry. <laughs> you, have, you have the tubs, <laughs> yeah. they can't move. Both bearings have tubs. We were just talking about putting a lube on the bottom of the uh, the bearings, which I don't want to do. So we're not doing it. You don't need it for sure, but it's not a problem if you have it. This is like Hulk, uh, did I say this already? It's incredible Hulk snot. <laughs> not in video. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so, so the numbers. numbers. The numbers are here, I believe. Well, we can check after. I'm sure they are there. That's it. Okay, come back. All right, so first piston is in. 20 after 9. So I think what we'll do is uh, I'll let Alin go. He's had a long day. And uh, I will put the other five pistons in myself. And uh, if I'm not bored by then, I'll put the um, sealing block on and the oil seal and uh, we'll move forward. So anyway, that's a good start, I would say, for today. Perfect. We did a lot of work already. Yep. Half of the rebuild is done. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have it started by tomorrow evening, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's it for tonight. We'll probably upload this just so you can see we're working on it. And I have a bit of video footage from previous days so my girlfriend can see where I was <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I uh, just in case she's checking up on you so okay so that's it for tonight guys thanks for watching and uh, thanks for commenting as always and we'll see you at a later date night all right guys Saturday morning just coming up to uh, 9 30 a.m. and uh, back in the garage and continuing work on the engine rebuild project so I moved things around a little bit. We moved our rings over here, just a little bit closer to uh, the engine block so I could clear off my bench. So I could work on uh, re-ringing all the rings and attaching them to the connecting rods. So that's what we're going to do here. So we'll do all those first, get that out of the way, and then we'll work on installing them in the block one by one. So that's the plan for this morning. So we'll uh, crank up the tunes and uh, we'll get to work. Hardest part about this is probably getting the uh, circlips out of the uh, gudgeon pins. <laughs> Alright, we've got number two and three piston on the connecting rod. No bearings yet, but uh, just uh, connected to the piston, so we're happy with that. Just got to piston number four, and for those of you who are new to the channel, uh, this was a problem when I pulled it out of, the, uh, out of the car. It actually was intact when I pulled it out of the bore, and as soon as I pulled it out of the bore, this piece up here fell off. So. We figured out there was a little fracture because I found a piece of metal. If you go back and look at my videos, we found a little small piece of metal in the oil pan and it was actually a small piece of the piston that had cracked out and had come off. And fortunately, this didn't come apart while the engine was running. But uh, anyway, I just thought I'd show you a quick shot of that before we uh, go ahead and take the connecting rod off this one and uh, put a new piston on it. So I figured I'd take a quick video of uh, just taking the connecting rod off the old uh, pistons just for anybody that's never done it before so uh, bear with me I'm not very fast at it but uh, anyway we'll do it together we'll do number this is number five so we're gonna take the uh, the bearing cap off so uh, just so you know on the triumphs and I'm assuming this is on most engines so the bearing caps are numbered yeah I don't think anybody be able to see this so this is number five. Let me see if I can see it in the viewfinder or not. So I don't know if you can see the five here. And there's a five here. Trust me, it's there if you can't see it. Anyway, that's the way that needs to be aligned when you put it back together. And obviously you don't want to mismatch caps with connecting rods. So we'll just pull this off. Of course. <laughs> This is the only one that's going to be stubborn to come off. Let me get a rubber mallet and we'll be right back. All right, just give this guy a little tap.
Okay, so once that's off, what I've been doing is I've been removing the uh, old bearings just to get them out of the way. And actually these bearings were actually in, well, this one's a little scored up, but uh, they weren't in too bad a shape. These can be a bit difficult with greasy hands as well. Okay. All right. So, what we need to do next is a, a circlip that's holding the gudgeon pin in. So the pin here is held in by a circlip on each side. So we've got to remove at least one of the circlips just to get the old piston off the connecting rod. So what I've been doing is I have, I've just been sacrificing these. So I'm just sort of bending up the tab and then just pulling them out with a pair of vice grips since we're not going to be re reusing these rings or the, uh, or the gudgeon pin. So anyway, so that's what I've been doing. Sacrifice. Because I was tired of playing around with the snap ring pliers trying to get these out. So I've just been bending it up like so, grabbing a pair of needle nose vice grips, locking it onto that pin, and just pulling it out. So that seems to work well for me. Quickest and easiest solution. Alright, so now we're going to move this gudgeon pin out, and we're just going to tap it lightly from the other side with a drift just to get it started. Just on the edge. You'll see it coming out the other side. So we'll just continue on. Let's go this way. A little difficult to try to keep you in uh, in view and do this at the same time, but we'll do our best. Okay, so there we go. That comes out. This probably needs to be tapped a bit more. Yeah. Actually, you can pull the rod out. It's out far enough. Okay, so there's the old piston out. So we'll put that over in the old uh, ashtray uh, use category. We're not replacing the small end uh, bushings. Just clean these out, clean them off a little bit. All right, we'll come back in a sec. I'll grab my new piston. All right, we've got a new piston and our new pin. So we'll just pull that out. We got our two uh, new snap rings just off to the side here. So we have to figure out the orientation. I know that the uh, orientation of my uh, connecting rod is going to go something like this in the engine. So these are, uh, if you're interested, these are county brand. You can probably see from the box. These are county brand pistons. They are uh, 30 over, so they do have an arrow on the top. I don't know if you want to see that, and they're marked 30 over as well. You see that? Yeah. All right. So you just got to make sure you get the orientation of the piston correct. So again, I know my engine block, uh, the rod's going to go in like this. The front of the engine is pointing this way, so I want to make sure that the arrow is pointing to the front of the engine when this is installed. So that's going to go something like that. Okay? 
So that's the alignment for my car. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, add one circlip to one end. So we'll take our snap ring pliers. I'm famous for losing snap rings, so hopefully this won't be the case on this video. So put it in your snap ring pliers. Just drop it down into the groove. Okay. Just make sure it's seated there all the way around. So there's the snap ring in the groove. Okay. So we'll insert the uh, insert the pin from the other side. So again, make sure you have your the way the piston's going to go. All right, it's going to go like that. So what I'm going to do is just going to add some assembly lube to my uh, my pin. We're going to start inserting it from the side, obviously, that the circlip's not already installed on. Just get it started. Okay. To there. Going to add a little bit of assembly lube to our uh, small end. Stick it in, push your bush through, line it up, okay, and then of course you want to add your, make sure it's tight against the snap ring on that side, and you want to add your second snap ring to keep that in place. This one needs a little bit of uh, help to, so I'm just going to tap that down with my drift to make sure it's in the bore. Carefully. You can almost hear it uh, snap in, so that one is in, so we'll put our cap back on loosely. Remember to align your numbers up. So five and five. We're not going to do the uh, bearings at this point. We'll wait to do that. So just put that cap on loosely with our bolts back in. And we will get ready for the next step. So on to number six. We'll finish that up and uh, we'll bring it back. All right, guys. Ring time. We've got the uh, pistons laid out one through, or sorry, two through six, and uh, we've got the oil control rings to go on first. We'll work our way up from the bottom. Lynn's already done a bit of a tutorial on this, so we'll just follow that, and uh, end up with the uh, two compression rings on top, and uh, we'll do all the remaining pistons. Then we'll get ready for the next step. Okay, rings are done, so we're just going to add the uh, the bearing. To the connecting rod. So look for the tab, locating tab. And just slide it in. Like so. There's a little tab here. Alright, so we'll just continue on doing that and uh, then on to the next step. Getting close to installation. Alright, all the uh, shells are in the connecting rods, so uh, on to the next step, which is installing in the engine. So 
I think I'll take a quick break for lunch. It's now 10 after 12, so it took me that long to get all the rings done, all the uh, gudgeon pins installed, and all of the uh, bearings installed in the uh, connecting rods. So next step, engine block. All right, guys, ready for number two pistons. So we've got the crank all the way down to the bottom. So we're just gonna flip the engine over and get to the top side, and uh, we'll set the piston up before it goes in. Alright guys, connecting rod bolt time, torque time. So the manual says 38 to 46 foot-pounds, so I always go to the maximum, so we're going to go 46 foot-pounds. There we go, so we'll do them all, and uh, we'll call the crank and pistons done. One last shot, we'll call her done. It's good to me. Let's move on. All right, guys, I'm trying to break this up into uh, sections. So uh, I uploaded part one, which was prepping the block. Um, this will be part two, which will be uh, crank and piston uh, installation. And then we'll move onwards and upwards from here into part three. So uh, preview of that is going to be uh, oil pump. And oil pump bush will be the first video I do on that. So stay tuned for that. And then we will call it a wrap on uh, part two and uh, upload that maybe tonight and then we'll get on to uh, working on part three shortly all right guys thanks